What makes a social network such as Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram so powerful and quite frankly so addicting? There are a number of reasons, but the main reason why is likely because of the digital relationships we form on these platforms. For millions of people, these major social networks are how we keep up with our social circle and even meet new people digitally that sometimes we have never even met in real life. Chances are you have dozens, if not hundreds, or even thousands of digital connections and relationships on the internet. If you were to map out all of these connections, that would make up your social graph. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the importance of social graphs, as well as how Web2 social media sites such as Facebook are taking advantage of you and your personal data thanks to social graphs. Make sure you stick around until the end of this video to figure out how you can take this power back and truly own your data and social graph with the help of Web3. So the proper definition of a social graph is the representation of the interconnection of relationships in an online social network. Now that is a mouthful, but every time that you are liking a photo, adding a new friend, or updating your status, you are adding to your own personal social graph. If you were to map out your social graph on a whiteboard, it would look a lot like a spider web of connections and information. Social graphs are so important to the core of social media because your own personal social graph represents your digital fingerprint. It's what makes you unique online and it represents the data these social media platforms use in order to cater to your interest, relationships, and digital identity as a whole. Now the term social graph has been around for decades, but it really became popular thanks to Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, now known as Meta. Back at a conference in 2007, this term was used in order to describe how the Facebook platform would take advantage of user data in order to create a richer online experience. And although Facebook's claim that its social graph would bring a richer experience to its users is true, there was no doubt ulterior motives at play as well. Facebook and all other Web2 social platforms utilize social graphs in order to monetize its users' data and keep you on the platform for as long as possible. And if you really think about it, it's the perfect way to do so. Thanks to such comprehensive social graphs, graphs, these platforms know everything about you. It is no wonder why when you search for an item online, such as a pair of shoes, the next time you log into Facebook, you are seeing advertisements for the newest pair of Nikes. These platforms are collecting all of your personal data and selling it to advertisers. And not only that, but these major social media platforms will feed you curated and personalized information on your timeline in order to keep you on the platform for even longer so that they can show you even more advertisements and the cycle continues and continues. And all of this is thanks to the social graphs that Facebook and these other platforms have created. And not only does Facebook monetize your personal data, but they actually own your personal social graph. Think about it for a second. The network of friends, content, and information that you've put online belongs solely to these social media platforms. If you were to get banned on Facebook or Twitter, you are locked out of your account. You can't take your content, friends, or followers to a new platform. You literally lose everything. And this is entirely intentional. As a user in Web2, if you leave the Facebook platform, then they lose the opportunity to sell your data to advertisers. This is why Facebook will do everything in its power to create a walled garden of sorts with social graphs. They will make it impossible for you to port over your information to other platforms unless they have some kind of financial incentive to do so. And the worst part is, up to this point, there has never really been an alternative to centralized social media. Now, this sounds pretty dystopian and hopeless, but luckily there's now a viable solution to this problem. And that solution is decentralized social media. There's a popular saying in crypto, not your keys, not your coins. This means that if you don't actually own the private seed phrase to your wallet, then you really are not in full control of the cryptocurrency that's in that wallet. The same thing goes for social media. Not your social graph, not your connections or content. How are you able to say that you're truly in control of your data when these Web2 social media platforms literally own everything? With decentralized social media, your social graph and content lives on chain. This means that every like, friend, or connection made is stored on a blockchain and secured in a transparent and decentralized manner. This eliminates the possibility for social media sites to use social graph against its users or create a walled garden of sorts trapping their users onto one platform. That simply isn't possible in Web3. And Deso is the top Web3 social media platform built on the blockchain. Deso is a custom built blockchain designed specifically to power an entire category of decentralized social applications. In fact, 
DSO is the only layer one blockchain that can support infinite state applications which are essential to the scalability of social media networks. And I cover that topic in more detail in this video right here. DSO gives you full control over your social graph and makes it seamless to port your information, content, NFTs, and coins between applications. And it's incredibly easy to use. Every person that joins DSO gets a DSO identity. Similar to MetaMask on Ethereum, your DSO identity allows you to log into any application built on the DSO blockchain and allows you to bring your profile, followers, content, and coins with you along the way. No single party has exclusive access to your DSO social graph or anybody else's for that matter. Not only does DSO make porting your information between applications easier, but it also takes the power away from potentially malicious Web2 giants. Without access to these extensive social graphs built by everybody's personal information, the Web2 social media model begins to fall apart. Web3 and DSO specifically are offering a far better solution that uses personal data to help the user rather than the platform itself. I suggest heading over to DSO.org, I'll leave a link down below in the description, and checking out just how revolutionary decentralized social media truly is. Stop allowing Web2 social media platforms to sell your data and take back control of your social graph today.